Picture this, a 150 pound predator routinely taking down prey that weighs 2,000 pounds. That's like watching a house cat successfully hunt a black panther. Yet fossil evidence from Montana's cloverleaf formation shows exactly this happening 115 million years ago. Deinonychus, the terrible claw, was found alongside the massive herbivore Tenontosaurus in 20% of cases from the cloverleaf formation, a certain percentage far too high for coincidence when typical chance fossil associations hover around 2 to 3%. But here's the mystery that revolutionized paleontology. How did this relatively small theropod manage such impossible kills? The answer points to specialized anatomy and enhanced intelligence that would rewrite our understanding of dinosaur behavior. To crack this prehistoric puzzle, we need to examine the evidence piece by piece. Montana's cloverleaf formation holds one of paleontology's most perplexing crime scenes. Scattered across the Badlands, researchers discovered evidence of an impossible hunting scenario that played out repeatedly over thousands of years. The victims were massive, the perpetrators were surprisingly small, the pattern was undeniable. In 1931, paleontologist Barnum Brown arrived in Montana searching for Tenontosaurus fossils. Brown expected to find the usual assortment of herbivorous dinosaur bones, but instead uncovered something that would puzzle scientists for decades. Near a massive Tenontosaurus skeleton, he discovered the remains of a much smaller carnivorous dinosaur, which he informally named Daptosaurus. Only decades later would John Ostrom recognize these remains as belonging to Deinonychus. This wasn't just a random fossil association. Brown had stumbled upon the first piece of evidence in a prehistoric mystery. The size difference between these animals defied evolutionary logic. Deinonychus weighed between 150 and 220 pounds, while adult Tenontosaurus could reach weights of 2,200 pounds. Imagine a German shepherd successfully hunting an adult rhinoceros. Modern predator-prey relationships show us why this shouldn't work, as the energy expenditure and injury risk of attacking oversized prey makes it evolutionarily counterproductive. John Ostrom's excavations in the late 1960s transformed this curiosity into a scientific revolution. Ostrom's late 1960s digs revealed four Deinonychus adults around each Tenontosaurus in multiple quarries cementing this unusual pairing. What emerged was a pattern that couldn't be ignored. 20% of Tenontosaurus fossils were found alongside Deinonychus remains. In paleontology, predator-prey associations occur by chance in roughly 2-3% of cases. 20% suggested something systematic was happening. The physical evidence painted a violent picture. Deinonychus teeth were embedded in Tenontosaurus bones, providing direct proof of predation rather than scavenging. The positioning of skeletal remains showed signs of struggle with Tenontosaurus bones scattered in patterns consistent with extended attacks. This wasn't opportunistic feeding on already dead animals. The forensic timeline revealed this pattern persisted across geological time. Dig sites spanning thousands of years showed the same associations indicating learned behavior passed through generations of Deinonychus populations. Whatever strategy these predators employed, it worked consistently enough to become their primary hunting method. The central question haunted paleontologists for decades. How could physics define predation actually function? The answer lay hidden in the predator's own anatomy. When researchers first examined Deinonychus fossils, they encountered anatomical features that challenged everything paleontologists thought they knew about theropod predators. This wasn't your typical dinosaur killer. Every bone told a story of specialization that seemed designed for an impossible task. The famous sickle-shaped claws that earned Deinonychus its name initially appeared to be devastating slashing weapons. Scientists imagined these curved talons delivering fatal cuts to prey, similar to how modern big cats use their claws. But finite element modeling by Manning et al. 2009 completely overturned this assumption. Studies showed these claws were adapted for hooking prey, not slashing. The bone density curvature and internal architecture all pointed to a grasping function designed to maintain a death grip on struggling victims. This discovery transformed how scientists viewed raptor hunting behavior entirely. 
The Raptor Prey Restraint Model, proposed by Denver Fowler and colleagues in 2011, suggests Deinonychus killed its quarry by leaping onto it, pinning it under body weight, and gripping tightly with those massive sickle claws, much like modern birds of prey. Combined with remarkably long grasping hands and climbing capabilities, Deinonychus could literally scale its massive prey during extended attacks. Ken Carpenter's 2002 biomechanical studies confirmed the forelimbs were perfectly adapted for grasping with elongated coracoid bones, indicating powerful arm muscles that gave unprecedented reach compared to other theropods. The animal's lightweight build and specialized joints allowed for agility that larger predators couldn't match. While most theropods relied on massive skulls and crushing bite force, Deinonychus took a different approach. Its skull was relatively weak compared to contemporaries like Allosaurus, and its bite force was surprisingly modest. Brute strength clearly wasn't this predator's primary weapon. The most crucial piece of evidence lay inside Deinonychus's skull. Relative brain size measurements show Deinonychus's brain to body ratio rivals modern wolves, hinting at advanced cognition that approached levels seen in today's most intelligent predators. For a dinosaur of its time period, this represented exceptional neural development. Comparative analysis showed brain structures associated with complex problem solving and spatial awareness. This combination of specialized anatomy and enhanced intelligence pointed to hunting strategies never before documented in the dinosaur fossil record. But individual intelligence alone couldn't explain how small predators consistently brought down giants 15 times their size. The answer might lie in something far more sophisticated than solitary hunting. The pack hunting hypothesis, while compelling, remains hotly debated among paleontologists. This theory suggests Deinonychus developed role specialization and tactical coordination that allowed small hunters to routinely bring down giants 15 times their size. But the evidence is far from conclusive. Evidence for complex social structure emerged from fossil sites where multiple Deinonychus individuals of different ages were found together near single Tenontosaurus remains. A particularly significant discovery in Montana's cloverly formation revealed at least four Deinonychus skeletons positioned around one massive herbivore. The age variation among these specimens suggests family groups or organized hunting parties rather than random scavenging events. Young adults, mature individuals and juveniles were all present indicating multi-generational cooperation. Coordinated pack attacks could overcome the massive size disadvantage through strategic role division. Some may have pinned the victim with foreclaws, while others delivered precise bites, much like eagle and hawk hunting teams. This division of labor would maximize effectiveness while minimizing casualties during extended assaults on struggling prey. Brain structures in the palate suggest potential vocalization ability, according to Turner et al. 2007, which could have facilitated communication during hunts. The robust skull roof structure, more developed than that of Velociraptor, suggests enhanced neurological processing that could support complex coordination between pack members. Partially healed fractures discovered in Deinonychus specimens provide compelling evidence for caregiving behavior within groups. These injuries would have been debilitating, yet the animal survived long enough for significant bone healing to occur. This recovery pattern indicates that injured individuals received support from their pack members, suggesting social bonds that extended beyond mere hunting cooperation. Brain complexity comparisons with modern pack hunters reveal similar neural structures associated with social cognition and tactical planning. The enlarged brain to body ratio found in Deinonychus specimens approaches levels seen in wolves and dolphins, both renowned for their cooperative intelligence and strategic thinking abilities. Repeated successful hunts documented in the fossil record suggest learned behavior passed down through generations of Deinonychus populations. However, this interpretation faces significant scientific challenges from research researchers who question whether the fossil evidence truly supports such sophisticated behavior. Researchers like Brian Roach and Daniel Brinkman present a dramatically different interpretation that challenges the entire pack hunting narrative. An alternative model likens Deinonychus to Komodo dragons drawn to kills for chaotic feeding, not coordinated hunts. They argue that the fossil evidence might be built on misunderstood associations, proposing that Deinonychus behavior more closely resembled modern monitor lizards engaging in feeding frenzies rather than tactical cooperation. The Komodo dragon alternative 
offers a compelling explanation for the mysterious fossil sites. Modern Komodo dragons are primarily solitary hunters, yet they congregate around large carcasses in chaotic feeding events. Komodos often converge on kills, five miles away fighting violently over meat, according to Alfenberg's 1981 research. These gatherings create a feeding hierarchy where larger individuals dominate, leading to aggressive competition and even cannibalism among the scavengers. This behavior could easily produce fossil associations similar to those found at Deinonychus sites. Evidence for cannibalistic behavior among Deinonychus specimens supports this alternative theory. Several fossil sites show Deinonychus remains with bite marks from other Deinonychus, suggesting these weren't cooperative hunters, but opportunistic scavengers competing violently for access to Tenontosaurus carcasses. The dismembered and scattered nature of many Deinonychus bones indicates prolonged feeding events where individuals fought each other as much as they fed. Taphonomic analysis from Montana's Cloverly Formation reveals critical details about how these ancient sites formed. The study of decay and fossilization processes shows that many Deinonychus tenontosaurus associations lack the articulation expected from coordinated kills. Instead, the extensive dismemberment and scattered remains suggest prolonged scavenging events where carcasses were fed upon over extended periods by multiple individuals arriving at different times. Counter arguments about brain size challenge assumptions linking intelligence directly to pack hunting behavior. Large brains serve multiple evolutionary purposes beyond social coordination, including enhanced spatial awareness, improved hunting precision, and better environmental adaptation. The enlarged brain to body ratio in Deinonychus might simply reflect individual hunting specialization rather than cooperative intelligence. The fossil evidence itself remains ambiguous enough to support either interpretation, leaving paleontologists genuinely divided. Without direct behavioral evidence, both theories remain scientifically valid interpretations of identical fossil data. This ongoing debate reveals the inherent challenges of prehistoric detective work, where scientists must construct behavioral narratives from incomplete physical evidence spanning millions of years. Whether Deinonychus hunted in coordinated packs or competed as solitary scavengers, this remarkable predator fundamentally transformed how we understand dinosaur intelligence and behavior. This debate exemplifies how paleontologists solve puzzles from bone fragments weighing multiple interpretations. John Ostrom's discovery sparked the dinosaur renaissance that continues reshaping paleontology today, replacing images of slow lumbering reptiles with dynamic intelligent creatures. This 115 million year old mystery demonstrates that scientific breakthroughs often emerge from questioning evidence that seems impossible. New methods like CT scans and advanced biomechanical modeling may eventually provide direct evidence of social behavior in these ancient predators. Which theory do you find most convincing? Let us know below.